Okay, can you see me now? Can, huh? Okay. Okay. Now, what is uh, what is the thyroid nodule? Nah? What your what is it so important? Thyroid nodule. Okay, this thyroid nodule, okay, is classified as a okay, the enlarged goiter, and it's classified into a diffuse. Okay, enlargement of the thyroid is called goiter. Okay, so it can be a diffuse one or it can be a nodular one. Okay. Now, if it's diffuse, then you can be general enlargement of the thyroid, such as toxic goiter and inflammatory goiter. Okay. Now, we are today interested in the uh, nodular goiter, which can be either a solitary nodule or a discrete nodule, okay, where the rest of the gland is normal. And secondly, or it can be a multinodular goiter, which is also very common, which where the nodule that you are feeling or seeing is a dominant nodule of the of a multinodular go goiter. So the difference between this is, okay, let me annotate and show you the, uh, this thing. Okay, uh, the difference between the solitary nodule and a dominant nodule and a multinodular goiter, in solitary nodule, Rest of the gland is normal. Rest of the thyroid gland is normal. Eh? So that's what we'll be dealing with today. Okay. Now the second one is the multinodular goiter. Okay, multinodular goiter, which can be simple goiter, thyroid nodule, or neoplasty. Can you all hear me? Yes, doctor. The pic uh, slide you all can see also, eh? Yes, doctor. Okay. Okay, so these are some pictures to show you the different types of goiters. Eh? First is a diffuse goiter, whereas there's generalized enlargement of the thyroid gland. Eh? Front, lateral, the whole gland is involved. Okay, these are usually non-toxic uh, or toxic goiters. It can be Graves' disease or thyroiditis, inflammation of the thyroid. Whereas the, the other one is your multinodular goiter. You can see right side and left side. Left side, you can see large, two large nodules here. Maybe there will be also other small nodules as well. Okay, so this is uh, multinodular goiter, which is a very common uh, condition and which is a very important case for, especially year five, it is important for your long case. It can be either toxic and usually is benign. And here, this is what we are interested in today. Okay, this is a solitary nodule here, which can be a cyst, can be a solid, toxic, non toxic, can be benign or malignant. So this today we'll be concentrating on this solitary thyroid nodule. Okay. Now what is a solitary thyroid nodule? Eh? A solitary thyroid nodule, you can define it as a palpable swelling with, with an otherwise normal gland. Eh? That means the palpable nodule and the thyroid, surrounding thyroid is normal. Okay. 50% of patients thought to on basis of physical examination to have a solitary nodule. Eh? That means you look at the patient. You think is uh, on inspection and palpation, there's only one module. But if you could do ultrasound, actually there are multiple nodules, tiny nodules which are not palpable or visible. So that means there will be 50% of what you see is a multiple uh, solitary nodule is actually a uh, part of a multinodular goiter. And then the important thing, uh, what is important about this, a small percentage, usually less than five, some books tell you some even 1%. Eh? Is, uh, of these solitary nodules are malignant, okay? Especially in patients with endemic thyroidina. We'll talk about it in a short while. Okay, women are um, four times more common and it increases with age. It is increases. That means in young, it is common in young adults and in old adults, uh, in elderly patients, uh, above 50 and less than 20. Okay, these are the two big groups. Uh. Okay, now this is a picture showing you. This is the thyroid gland, the whole gland. Okay, the location of the thyroid is very important to understand this, uh, this uh, picture. This is a solitary nodule here. Okay. So a solitary nodule, the rest of the gland is normal. If it is a dormant nodule in a multinodular goiter, then the rest of the gland will also be abnormal. That means it will also be enlarged, will be microscopically, there will be multiple nodules. Okay. Now, uh, isolated nodules can be a single lump, which I told you, or it can be a dominant nodule, 
And these are the important things. Huh? The common causes will be malignancy in about 10 to 15 percent of cases, adenomas, especially follicular adenomas, in about one third of the patients. It can be a cyst, degenerative cyst of a multinodular goiter, or it can be, huh? this is called uh, colloid degeneration, or it can be due to inflammation, thyroiditis, viral thyroiditis. More common is your auto autoimmune thyroiditis. Huh? The important thing is malignancy, eh? the possibility of being malignant and the malignancy is higher, higher in solitary nodules compared to a dominant nodule in a multinodular goiter. Solid, more um, have a higher chance of being malignant. Males, okay, although it's more, the nodule is more common in the female, but if it occurs in the male, higher chance of becoming malignancy and very young and very old patients. Okay, teenagers, huh? that's the most common. And another group, big group of patients is above 50, above 60. Huh? High, the higher, the uh, older the patient is, the higher the chance of being malignancy. And uh, what are the features that, uh, that will lead to you to suspect malignancy? Heart nodule, fixed nerve palsy, cervical limb adenopathy. So any of these features are present in the nodule, then you must come think of malignancy. Okay? So 4% of the population, pain is unusual. Huh? Normally, no pain. Hoarsen and then sometimes they can have pressure symptoms, hoarseness of voice, or risk factors for malignancy, yeah? uh, especially exposure to ionizing radiation. Okay? The, if the patient in during childhood has undergone some x-rays or some form of radiation, then higher chance. Family history of thyroid malignancy, Okay, also another risk factor. Okay, here the picture shows you a midline here, a thyroid nodule, okay, which presents as a swelling in the uh, neck. Okay, these are some other pictures to show you the various types of nodules. Okay, see, single nodule, single nodule, single nodule. Huh? All these are some pictures to show you. Huh? These are all important because the patient that you get for your exam may belong to one of these uh, pictures that you see here, all right? Okay, now what is the management? In fact, it, what is, what, how will you manage this patient? That means how will you go about uh, handling this patient? Huh? Okay, that's called management. Huh? Treatment is different. Huh? Okay, first you have to get a good history. Personal history, present history, past history, family history, history of radiation, all these things are very important. Then you do a thorough clinical examination. Okay, which I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the examination of the neck and thyroid. And then you go for some investigations, which include blood tests, laboratory investigation, thyroid function tests, okay, T3, T4, TSH, radiological investigation or imaging, such as ultrasound, okay, and uh, biopsy, FNAC, and finally the treatment. So these are the important things in the Managing a patient. When you see a patient, these are the parameters or these are the things that you must consider in your particular patient. Okay, when it comes to history, the important thing is age and sex, I told you. It's more common in female, four times more, and young adults. Young adults are teenagers, very common. And the other big group is above 50, above 60. The higher, the older the patient, the higher the chance. Okay, so that will be another important one. Then toxic nodule. Uh, this one. Then, then you have the swelling. What are the, how the patients present? Neck swelling, either on the front or on the side of the neck. You sh they can have pain, especially if it is inflammatory. Eh? But otherwise, you rarely, most of them do not have pain. Eh? Okay? And that is more uh, suspicious of being malignant. And pressure symptoms. Eh? It can, if it is near to the, the nerve or if it is big in size, then it can cause pressure symptoms, hoarseness of voice, dyspnea and dysphagia. These are the three things. These are the common presenting features. Huh? And most of them may not have any symptoms. Huh? They sometimes small nodule, they don't even notice it huh? until somebody else notices it in the family saying that hey, your neck is swollen. So they when you come, then you palpate and you see a small nodule there. And then the other thing is they may have features. If it is a toxic nodule, huh? that means the nodule is hyperactive and increases production of thyroid hormones. You can be toxic with hyperthyroid symptoms, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, huh? hyperthyroid symptoms. Very important to get a history of neck radiation. Okay. 
And then this three, family history of prior disease, okay, and also autoimmune disease and family history of cancer, especially cancer of the thyroid. Okay, on examination, what are the things you look for? Okay, so first of all, you see the ob uh, obvious nodule. Now you describe where you see the nodule and how it looks like and whether it moves on swallowing. These are the important things that you must do. Okay, and then once you have confirmed this nodule and this, uh, inspection and palpation, then you look for factors to suggest its malignancy. Malignant nodules are usually large, large ones, huh? more than three centimeters, huh? at least more than two centimeters. Very tiny lumps, one milli, you know, less than one centimeter, rarely become malignant. Huh? They can become fixed, cannot move, hard with irregular surface, and cervical lymphadenopathy. Huh? So these are the important signs which will suggest to you it is a malignant. Benign nodule, usually, some if they have pain and use it's inflammatory nodule or tenderness associated with the nodule. Huh? That means you press, you touch, the patient is in pain. So it's rarely, you unlikely to be malignancy. Usually it's an inflammatory nodule. Huh? And then it is usually smooth, okay? Soft, smooth, and mobile. Huh? Okay, I thought some of, I showed some of the students huh, at the, lately. What, how, what do you mean by hard? You know, hard huh? demonstrated on some patient which we had. Okay, you can classify as hard, firm, and soft. Okay, firm and soft, normally benign. Huh? It is, this one is very hard. When you palpate, it's very hard. Actually, it's stony hard huh? if it is cancer. And important thing, majority of thyroid nodules are benign. Less than 5% are malignant. Huh? In fact, most studies show it's about only 1%. So why are we harping on this nodule? Because as I said, this nodule commonly occurs in a young patient, teenager, and this is very good prognosis. If you treat, if you remove the nodule, the it's almost cure rate. Huh? The prognosis is almost 100% cure rate. So it's very important, although 1%, but it is very young patients, 10 years old, 15 years old, school going, age group of patients. Huh? So it's very important to be aggressive in the treatment so that the, you can benefit from the cure, cure rate. Huh? Okay. So this picture here shows you the nodule here. Sometimes you got multiple nodules. So this nodule is what that you see. So you think it's solitary nodule, but you do ultrasound, there are multiple nodules, okay? So anywhere, it can occur anywhere, eh? right lobe, left lobe, or in the isthmus, okay? Okay, so the, the history, what are the predisposing factors for this, uh, for this, uh, this uh, malignancy, eh? predisposing factors for malignancy? Age, I told you. Less than 20, above 70. Above 50 is already high risk, but the more you, older you are, the higher the risk. Huh? So 70 is very high. Huh? Most books will tell you 60, okay? Male sex, okay? I told you that. History of childhood neck radiation, okay? And then family history of PT, parathyroid, uh, uh, papillary tumor of the cancer, uh, of the thyroid, papillary thyroid carcinoma, or medullary carcinoma, or patients with multiple endocrine dysplasia too, okay? If any of these patients has got, then the <laughs> higher chance of becoming malignant. Okay, on examination, larger than 3 cm, rapid growth, firm nodule, irregular surface, fixing fixation to the adjacent structure, cervical lymphadenopathy, and on thyroid, uh, radioisotope scan is a cold nodule. When you do a radioisotope scan, I'll show you afterwards, it can be a cold nodule or a Hot nodule. Cold nodule, that means it's hypofunctioning. Eh? So that nodule is higher chance of becoming malignant than a eh? hot nodule. Then solid or complex cyst on ultrasound. Cyst is rarely malignant. Eh? Whereas solid, higher chance of being malignant. Okay, So that's the importance of the ultrasound to detect whether it's solid or cyst. Okay, now, patient comes with you with a solitary nodule. What are the differential diagnoses of these patients? It's a dominant nodule in a multinodular goiter. Actually, that's, um, that's very common. It can be a thyroid adenoma, which I told you. It can be a thyroid cyst, thyroid carcinoma, or it can be a localized form for thyroiditis or colloid goiter. And I told you, autoimmune disease is the most common form of thyroiditis. Okay. What are the investigations? Normal investigations would be thyroid function test, which consists of T3, T4, and TSH. 
autoantibodies, if you suspect it's thyroiditis, if it is painful, patient having pain, fever, and you touch where it's very tender, then it, you may want to look for autoantibodies. Isotope scan, okay? If the patient has got thyroid symptoms, hyper-functioning, hyper uh, hyperthyroid symptoms, you may want to do to see whether this, the nodule is cold or hot. Hot means uh, toxic. Cold means no chances of being malignant. And ultrasound scan, okay? This is the most important first-line investigation, huh? ultrasound of the neck. And this is also used for the uh, fine needle aspiration site, actually, because always this FNAC is done under ultrasound guidance. So this will be the ultrasound and FNAC will be the investigations of choice in any patient with thyroid nodular. Then others will be, if and when necessary, chest x-ray, CT scan, MRI scan, eh? and also core biopsy, eh? if the FNAC is negative. If you are highly suspicious, then you must do a core biopsy. Eh? Okay, so this is a summary. TSH antibodies, radioisotope imaging, fine needle, and, then, and ultrasound. Okay, the most important thing is ultrasound with fine needle aspiration pathology. Eh? Okay, ultrasound, I told you, is the most important. So all patients, eh, and it is the most sensitive test to detect lesions of the thyroid. Okay, if they ask you what test you do, I will straight away, don't do CT scan first, always do thyroid uh, ultrasound. Eh? It is recommended that all patients who have a nodular thyroid with a palpable solitary nodule or, or a multinodular goiter must be evaluated by ultrasound. However, ultrasound is not indicated as a screening test in the general population. Okay, um, because the chance of detecting is very, very small eh? of malignancy. Eh? Okay, these are some ultrasound pictures to show you here. Hypoechoic, yeah. hypoechoic, and here, hypo okay. this is hyper, this is hypo, okay, and then it, it, it uh, this is a call, a uh, grim sign here, okay, and this is known as your feature of a benign nodule, eh? okay, and here is another nodule, eh? Benign nodule, you see very clear, hypoechogenic, very well defined. There's no calcifications inside. This multiple calcification within, within the uh, tissue of that uh, nodule, eh? this suspicious of malignant nodule. The border is not well defined and there's no, uh, what do you call this, you know, fluid around the nodule. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is uh, another one showing you. Uh, right flow, left flow, there's a nodule here. Okay, so these are features of ultrasound uh, findings. Okay, this is uh, ultrasound features of a malignant nodule, hyper hypoechogenic, absence of halo sign. Okay, this is the so called halo sign around here. Okay, hello, uh, hello. Then here, irregular margins, which I showed you in the last picture here, the margins are very irregular. And sometimes there's a break in the capsule. And then microcalcification within the nodule. Within the nodule, microcalcifications. Whereas benign nodule and echogenic or hyperechoic, uniform, eh? and there's a thin halo sign around it. Regular margin, all right? And the eggshell calcification. The calcification is around the periphery, around and the out, that means over the outer uh, capsule of the so-called nodulia, okay? Then this calcification, see, around the, uh, around the nodule. So this is known as like an eggshell calcification, which is a sign of uh, benign. Here, yeah? intracapsular, uh, microcalcification, intranodular, and it is very suggestive of malignancy. Okay, investigations, I think the most important, I already mentioned, thyroid function test and serum antibodies. And imaging will be the second one, ultrasound. This is very important. You can detect, detect between solid and uh, cystic. The size of the nodule can be assessed by an ultrasound. Nowadays, with high-resolution ultrasound, you can get all these things very easily. You can see whether there are other nodules in the gland. 
so that to differentiate between a solitary nodule and a multinodular goiter and whether there are uh, features of uh, malignant features or not, okay, such as hypoecogenic, micro calcification, irregular margins, hypervascular, especially nowadays we do ultrasound, Doppler ultrasound, you can see whether it's hypervascular. So if a hypervascular means it can be either a toxic nodule or it can be a malignant nodule. Eh? And lymphadenopathy, yeah? whether there's any lymphadenopathy in the back. So I call lymphadenopathy can also be detected. Small lymph nodes, about one centimeter, less than two centimeters, one centimeter can be detected by ultrasound. Okay. And then it can be also uh, is useful as a guide, uh, ultrasound guide, uh, guided aphanasia. Yeah? Sometimes if it is a cyst, later under management, we'll talk about it. Aspiration of the cyst can also be done under ultrasound guidance. And nowadays they have, if it is a cyst, you can treat by injection, ethanol injection into the cyst or laser uh, phototherapy. Yeah? All these need the assistance of ultrasound. So the use of ultrasound in thyroid nodule is and uh, there are is varied and uh, there are a lot of uses. Okay, not only for diagnosis, also for treatment. Okay. And in order to do all these procedures, newer procedures, you need ultrasound guide to localize the uh, nodule uh, so that you will not uh, cause damage to the normal thyroid tissue. Eh? Okay. The second one is radionuclear scan, which can detect whether it's of a hot nodule or a cold nodule. Okay. So now, here is one. It is a cold nodule here. Okay. Cold nodule means it doesn't, does not take up your radioisotope that you give. Okay. Hot nodule, it takes up. I'm sorry. Cold nodule, it does not take up. So you see high, here, hypo, uh, this hypo area, that's cold nodule. Cold nodule, as I said, higher chance of malignancy. Hot nodule, it produces hormones, increased hormones. Patient may be hypothyroid. And this is usually cold higher chance of being malignant, okay? And then it can also use to reveal any retrosthenal extension, okay? And then in case of uh, patients with uh, post-op thyroid, uh, thyroidectomy for cancer, you, this uh, radio nuclear scan is also useful to detect metastasis in other parts of the body, especially in the bones. Huh? So these are the uses of radio uh, nuclear scan, huh? usually using uh, iodine one one two five or more more use more commonly iodine one three one. Okay, nowadays they use technetium ninety nine scans. Huh? So these are the important things that you can use. Huh? Okay, so okay, so cold nodule non functioning, hot nodule is functioning. Cancer is in cold nodule can be five to ten percent, hot nodule is less than one percent. Okay, so these are the important things about a hot nodule and cold nodule. Okay, and the third one is doing some, especially I told you, if the patient has got family history of medullary carcinoma, that means he can have also uh, thyroid carcinoma. Eh? So in these patients, or men too, eh, multiple endocrine neoplasia too, in these patients, you may want to do serum calcitonin because medullary carcinoma, okay, with, uh, releases calcitonin and also serum calcium and urinary reticulations. Eh? Okay. And screening a family with uh, this type of family, uh, type of uh, carcinomas is very important eh? because in these patients, you may want to do total thyroidectomy. Eh? Okay. Other scans that are done not routinely, but in some cases, especially for malignant cases, will be MRI, CT scan. CT scan, and these are rarely used, but CT scan is common, may be used in, if it is diagnosed as malignancy, then you want to stage the disease. CT scan is one of the common modality of imaging eh, for these patients. Okay. PET scan, using the FDG. Uh, uh, dye, you introduce a dye there so you can detect, detect, especially this is usually to differentiate malignancy from benign and more so for uh, looking for secondary deposits. Eh? Okay, and these are not available. PET scans, very expensive, not available, but they are much more, uh, they are much better than MRI and CT scan. A CT scan is easily available and not so costly. 
therapy. So, of course, the first line we do CT scan. Unless the patient has got recurrent malignancy, then you may want to do a PET scan to see where the malignancy is and what's the extent of the metastasis. Okay, the other one important thing is you must know is FNAC. Eh? You must know what is FNAC. Okay, FNAC is a you know, fine needle aspiration cytology. It is sensitive 70 to 90 percent and specific 70 to 90 percent. So it's very highly sensitive and specific for the diagnosis of malignant uh, thyroid cancer. And there can be a false negative of only 1 to 6 percent. And the, okay, of course, it, reliability depends on the operator, not the person taking the specimen. Eh? If you take under ultrasound guidance, right, right place or right side, then you get a very high accuracy rate. Eh? And also depend on the pathologist, cytopathologist who can uh, read your uh, cytology report accurately. Eh? But the import, but the drawback is it cannot differentiate between follicular adenoma and carcinoma. Because follicular adenoma is diagnosed by its invasion of the capsule of the thyroid. So this one only gives you the cytology, cytology cells. Right? It doesn't give you whether it is invades the capsule or not. So it is cannot. So papillary carcinoma and uh, anaplastic carcinoma it is very, very accurate in diagnosing. Yeah? So it's not good for follicular carcinoma. And okay. Okay, so this is, you have, after doing this, you have a positive, usually it's PTC and MTC, medullary and uh, papillary, and anaplastic and metastatic cancers. So suspicious will be follicular neoplasm, so you may have to do other tests to confirm this. Fertile cell neoplasms, atypical uh, thyroid uh, carcinoma, papillary carcinoma, and lymphomas. Eh? So this will be suspicious. And negative, poloid nodule, mac, uh, follicular adenomas, thyroiditis, granulometer, thyroid benign disease, eh? this will be negative. So this most important is to catch these positive things that in my FNAC. Okay. Then the other one you can do, nowadays people do, which is not available, easily available in our country, is immunohistochemical uh, markers. Huh? Okay, the common ones, which are HbMe1, okay, is a monoclonal antibody which stains the peptidic cancer, but does not stain the follicular benign cells. Okay, so this is a, uh, the, another marker that you can do. And also galactin-3, yeah? galactin-3, also, these are the two commonly used ones, but these are all very costly investigations, which is most cases is not necessary. And the other markers will be thyroglobulin and thyroid transcription factors for follicular cells. And totally follicular cells very rarely can be diagnosed by cytology. So we use other forms of uh, histochemical markers. Then calcitonin, CEA, and chromogranin for C cells. Okay, C cells are the parafollicular cells. Okay, we are talking about FNAC, FNAC, you must know what is FNAC, eh? and this is a ultrasound scan and ultrasound guided FNAC. Okay, now this is a probe, ultrasound probe, patient lying, this is the head, this is the neck, the right side, you see this ultrasound, uh, this, and you get a picture like that, benign looking nodule here. All right, so this is a ultra normal ultrasound scan. And the bottom here, is again same thing. You use ultrasound probe to locate the cyst. Then you use a uh, syringe with the needle to aspirate the cells from the nodule. Okay, to look for abnormal malignant cells. Eh? So here again, this is how it happens. This is your ultrasound, the needle here, and this is the nodule. Okay, and immediately you stain it onto a slide, and then it's read by the histopathologist, eh? cytopathologist. Okay, and then they give you the report. And the report is usually even one to, uh, you can say, category one or stage one to stage six. Huh? It's known as the Thai report or Bet uh, Bethesda classification of fine needle aspiration. Huh? One and two, one not in, uh, cannot comment because it is poor sample. 
2 is benign, okay? 3 is atypia, follicular neoplasm suspicious in 4. So once you do this, then you may have to do a two cut or four biopsy to confirm it. Uh, rate 5 is suspicious of malignancy and P6 is malignant. Huh? So 1 and 2 definitely benign. 6 is definitely malignant. 3, 4 and 5 are in between. Okay. For these modules, we may have to do other forms of uh, treatment. Huh? Especially if it's suspicious for suspicious for malignancy, you can do a proper biopsy. Actually, it's the most most difficult is two and uh, three and four. Okay, we may have to do other biochemical tests, genetic uh, nuclear uh, testing. So these are important things that are coming lately. But as far as you are concerned, I think you just know this and uh, various stages and how is a follicular must be determined by a biopsy and yeah? core biopsy. All right. Okay, so the other one which you are talking to you is this tyrosequential testing. Eh? What is this tyrosequential testing? It's a test that uses cells collected from your thyroid nodule during FNAC to analyze the DNA and RNA to help in the diagnosis of, to see whether your thyroid nodule is cancerous or non-cancerous. This is called the thyroid gene sequencing, eh? which is also very, uh, in US and all, they do it very routinely. But in Malaysia, I think it's, in KL, I think they do, but it's very costly. Eh? In US, it seems it's 3,000 over US dollars per test. Eh? So not many people can afford to do that eh? globally. So it's either benign or malignant. Eh? Routine by a result, it can come back benign, intermediate or malignant. Malignant, straight away you go for thyroid surgery. Eh? Benign, you just observe. Okay. Intermittent, in, indeterminate, and that means you're not sure that especially follicular uh, carcinoma, then you, there's a role for thyroid sequencing. If it's negative, then you know it is benign, you need to observe. If it is positive, then you go for surgery. Okay, this is known as the thyroid sequential test. Eh? Okay, now, now come to the management. Okay. First of all, once you confirm it's malignant, then that's where the management comes in. And, and you have to do a CT scan. Huh? Here, there's a CT scan here to see a nodule. Okay, there's a breach in the nodule here. And this FNAC came back as a, uh, came back as a, uh, what do you call it? Anaplastic carcinoma, which is inoperable. Huh? Where it has caused compression of the trachea, okay? On the opposite side, trachea here, huh? shifted to one side. Here's a thyroid nodule, which is benign, well encapsulated, and you can see here eggshell, eggshell calcification eh, over the, the, the casing of the uh, uh, nodule. Eh. Here is a CT scan showing you a differentiator carcinoma nodule here, okay, which came out as a papillary carcinoma, thyroid carcinoma. Okay, so first in your management is confirm the diagnosis by TFT ultrasound and FADC, all right? Benign, usually since uh, you go for surveillance, unless it's growing in size, causing pressure symptoms, then you want to do surgery, hemi-thyroidectomy, yeah? If it's a cyst, you can aspirate, and now nowadays they have got uh, laser photoagulation as well as uh, injection, uh, in injection of Ethanol, and eh? these are the new new modalities of treatment for benign nodules. And solid, the chances of becoming malignant is higher. So if the patient has got symptoms, okay, he notice uh, it's becoming bigger in size, causing pressure, then you go for surgery. Now, malignant, there's no once the cytology comes back malignant, surgery is the treatment of choice. Usually, lobectomy or hemithyroidectomy or total thyroidectomy with limb node excision, eh? cervical limb node clearance, especially the central level 6 limb nodes. Then staging, you, for these patients, you need a CT scan. Staging, you can do PET scan, whatever it is. The most commonly done in our hospitals is CT scan and chest x-ray. Okay? And then the other one is to also do a 
uh, if it is toxic, then you may want to also use TSH suppression. You may want to do a radio IOD to see the secondary metastasis at the to stage the disease itself. Okay. And these are the two things for cutaneous ethanol injection and laser photocoagulation. Okay, now uh, this uh, slide, okay, shows you the flow chart, huh? showing you the management huh? of uh, thyroid, solitary thyroid module, huh? STN. Huh? Okay, first of all, you do a TFT, thyroid function test and ultrasound. And then you come to either a solid or cystic. Cystic, I told you, most of the time, you just, some, you just initially you just aspirate the cyst. Okay, if the cyst is complex, then you may want to do other forms of treatment, laser treatment or uh, ethanol injection, and then you follow the patient, follow up the patient. If they recurse, then you may consider other forms of treatment as like even surgery, doing a lobectomy. Okay, so this is for cyst. Cyst is quite straightforward. If it comes back as solid, ultrasound says it's solid, then you suggest the patient for FNAC. So all solid modules must be subjected to FNAC and the ultrasound guidance. Okay? So I told you the three things. It can be a benign one or a malignant one or indeterminate, in between, not sure. Okay? So these are the three things. Benign, you go for lobectomy or hemithyroidectomy. Nowadays, people go for hemithyroidectomy, benign, and so settles the problem. Okay? Malignant, you go for total thyroidectomy plus limb node. Uh, excision of the level 6 limb nodes. Level 6 limb nodes uh, is the limb nodes around the thyroid in the center of the middle center part of the neck. Huh? Then after this, you may have to give the patient radio iodine ablation. You give radio iodine ablation so that to re uh, remove all other cells that may be left behind. Huh? TSH suppression, you give high dose of uh, Thyroxine, as usually we give uh, uh, liver thyroxine, uh, T4, uh, double the dose, 0 0.2 milligrams per day. And then the other one is completion thyroidectomy. If you have done a lobectomy for this patient on one side and it comes back as malignant, then you have to go for remove the other lobe as well, make it total. So completion thyroidectomy. Yeah? So this patient came with a nodule in one side, you do FNAC, inspect. <laughs> non malignant, so you went and did a lobectomy. So, when this lobectomy is done, you send the whole lobe to the pathologist and then they come back as malignant. So, you have to remove the other, other lobe as well. So, this is known as completion thyroidectomy or total thyroidectomy. Yeah? Okay. So, the problem is comes with indeterminate. Okay. This is you're not sure. The uh, FNAC is not sure whether it's malignant or but uh, uh, benign, eh? so you go. You have to remove the lobe where the, as I said just now, you remove the lobe, eh? lobectomy, and then you can do for HPE. Eh? So you can, uh, if you have the facilities, you do a frozen section on the table. Take out the lobe, send to the lab, and they do a frozen section. Within minutes, they give you a result saying it is malignant. Then you do a total thyroidectomy. If you don't have these facilities for frozen section. You remove the lobe, say you remove the right lobe, and then you close up. And then a few days later, and the report comes back as malignant, then you go for total thyroidectomy. So, okay, so these are the way, number, how you go about simple flowchart to guide you on how you manage a patient with thyroid module. Okay, and this thyroid sequential testing. They call it the next generation sequencing, uh, general new technology to analyze the arrangement of the genes that are important for cancer development. Uh. This is actually a genetic testing and uh, DNA and mRNA testing. Uh. They want to see the arrangement of the genes and this arrangement differs in patients with malignancy. Okay, so this is how nowadays you determine the thing. But this is uh, important. I find it. Uh, from my reading, I have not no experience because we don't do it here. So it's very costly. As I said, three thousand plus uh, US dollars, which comes to nearly almost twelve thousand already, eh? more than ten thousand just to do a test. Okay, but in US, I think it's easily available. It's done because maybe there the insurance covers. Eh? 
locally our insurance don't cover this okay okay so in finally in summary yeah what are some of the facts that you must know about thyroid nodule thyroid nodule is a palpably discrete swelling within an otherwise normal gland, eh? normal thyroid gland. That is important. Why is it important to differentiate? Because it is usually benign, but there is a small percentage of them being malignant. So you are going all out to, to weed out these malignant patients, although it's only about less than 5%. Okay? So you, all the how will you look for whether it's malignant or the benign, all the risk factors which I mentioned to you. Eh? And also the main thing is your uh, uh, FNAC or under ultrasound guidance. Okay, so you uh, as a student, eh, in your clinical exam, especially year five long case, then there's a nodule, you will examine the patient and then they'll tell you, the examiner will ask you now, tell me what are the features to suggest this is a malignant nodule. So which I told you, heart nodule, irregular borders, Okay, irregular surface and then pressure symptoms. Okay, that means there's compression, the, the cancer very early in the in its course of the history of the disease, it presses on the recurrent laryngeal nerve, causing hoarseness on the trachea to cause breathlessness and stridor, or it can press on the esophagus to cause uh, dysphagia. So these are the three symptoms. Eh? Okay, loss of weight is uh, in thyroid, which is not, it's a very late sign, huh? unless there's metastasis, very rarely the patients go into the severe loss of weight and appetite because the appetite seems to be quite normal. So loss of weight is not a very important, it's a feature, but it's not a very uh, significant feature in thyroid adenomas, huh? uh, malignant thyroid adenomas. Huh? Okay, so that's another thing. And then I told you it occurs in the children. Okay, teenagers. So they are young patients. So you want and the, and the, these tumors are especially papillary carcinoma is slow growing. So once you remove it, there's almost hundred percent cure. Okay, that's a very important thing. Okay, okay, fifty percent of patients who on basis of physical examination, if you diagnose as a solitary nodule, but in actual fact can be part of a multinodular goiter. So it's a nodule in a multinodular goiter. Okay, so this keep this in mind. Eh? Whenever you see one nodule, your differential diagnosis must also include multinodular goiter because what you are only half the patients you can diagnose clinically. You need ultrasound to manage the uh, diagnose the remaining. Now, the cyst and solid is very important. Once you, it's very easy, eh? once you do aspirate, Put a needle in, you can know it's a cyst. Ultrasound can tell you it's a solid or cyst. Okay, solid, higher chance of malignancy, and cyst, almost very rare, eh? almost never be, becomes, never, it's almost never malignant. Eh? Okay, very rarely you can say never in medicine, but this is one place where you can say never. Eh? Okay, 99.9 .9, we can say. Eh? So cystic nodule. It's simple cyst, okay? Cyst also got complex, huh? One is simple cyst, the other one is complex cyst, huh? That means it's multi-inoculated and all that. The simpler the cyst is, the less chance of being malignant. Simple cysts are more common than the complex cysts. Okay? Okay, that's all. Uh, any questions or not? 